give you glory, O God. We worship you, O God. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Your shout is a weapon this morning. Your praise is a weapon this morning. Your worship is a weapon this morning. Your obedience is a weapon this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. He heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weak. Praise his holy name. My God, come on. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in that valley. Hide me from the rain. My God, my God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened. Praise his holy name. My God is awesome. Come on. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God, my God is all. He heals me when I'm broke. He heals me when I'm broke. Gives me strength where I've been weakened. Where I've been weak. I will praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. My God, my God. He's holy, he's holy, he's holy, he's holy, he is awesome, awesome, he's mighty, 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 he is me when I'm broken strength where I've been weakened praise his holy name hey my God is awesome my God he is awesome my God he is my God he is my God he is my God you He's holy. He's holy. He's holy. He's holy. He's holy. 
to do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. To do mighty things. To do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Help me sing. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Yeah. You do mighty things. Mighty, mighty, mighty. mighty. Glorious, glorious, a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Say, there's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you in all the earth, in all the earth. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you, you do, you do mighty things, you do glorious things. You're a faithful God, awesome is your name. You do mighty things, mighty, mighty, mighty. You do glorious things, faithful God. Awesome is your name. True to mighty, 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 mighty. True to glorious, faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. That's no one like you. Jesus, there's no one like you in all the earth, in all the earth, there's no one like you, Jesus, there's no one like you, you do, you do my mighty, 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 glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. True to mighty. mighty. In all your ways, you do mighty things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do, you do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty. Mighty, 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 true to glorious things. You are, you are. Hey. So hear my cry, oh Lord. I turned on to my prayer. Hey, from the ends of the earth. Well,
this morning but i believe it's because you know that god is higher that god is greater that God is mightier, oh, yes. that God deserves all oh, the glory. Yeah, this morning, exalt the name of the Lord. Oh, yes, Tell him something God. that only oh, you know. Yes. Tell him something that only you can. Oh, Tell him something that God wants to hear oh, yes. from you this morning. Oh, I cannot praise yes. God for you. I cannot worship God for you. But the Bible says, come, let us do it together. This morning, bring him your praise. This morning, bring him your worship. I want you to close your eyes if you can. And Focus on the cross. Focus on the King of Kings. The Bible says, looking up unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I want you to look up unto Jesus this morning. Oh, yes. Tell him, Jesus, you are high among the bro. Shata Kaya Mama. Rada da 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 Zandra Iba Basete Mande bro. Shata Kaya Mama. I honor you this morning, most high God. I reverence you this morning, most high God. I exalt you this morning, most high God. For your ways are higher, for your ways are greater. There is no one like you, O God. There is no one above you, O God. Be lifted high above all the earth. Be lifted high above all the heavens. This morning we exalt you. This morning we worship you. This morning we magnify you. This morning we glorify you. For your name is Alpha. For your name is Omega. For your name is reliable. Your name is omnipotent. Your name is omnipresent. Your name is Shalom. Your name is the God who sees us. Your name is the God who provides us. Your name is the Lord who sustains us. This morning, oh God, we worship you. It's all about you this morning. We honor you this morning. Shata kaya mama maha. Mande bro shata ya baya ba. Rada da 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 shata kaya mama maha. Mande bro shaba ya baya ba. Yehovah For he alone is worthy, for he alone is mighty, for he alone deserves your praise. There is no God like Jehovah, there is no king like Jehovah, there is no lead, there's no leader like Jehovah, there is no defender like Jehovah, there is no provider like Jehovah, there is no helper like Jehovah. This morning, oh God, we celebrate you, we celebrate you, we celebrate. We celebrate you. 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 Your ways are high, Lord. So we celebrate you. Once we were young, now we are growing. We have never seen you forsake us, Lord. This morning, from the depths of our hearts, Lord, we exalt. You this morning, Lord, for there is no one like you are. We give you all the glory, we give you all the praise. We honor you, O God, we magnify you, O God. Manda Broshataya Bayaba, Manda Broshataya Mama, Rada da 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 Beautiful beyond description, Lord. This morning, what can we give you, O God, that is worthy of your praise, Lord? We worship you this morning. Oh, yes. We give you all the glory this morning. The Bible says, Sing unto the Lord a new song. The Bible says, Sing unto the Lord a new song. I want you to command your spirit to magnify the Lord. I want you to command. And your soul to magnify the Lord. I to come name on Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Elohim. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. He says, Call unto me, and surely I will answer. I want you to magnify the Lord. I want you to glorify the Lord. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your situation. It doesn't matter what time of year it is for you. The Bible says, Call. The Bible says, call her. The Bible says, call her. The Bible says, call her. Your father says, call her. The Lord says, call her. The 
is called. He says, Open your mouth wide and I shall fill it. Manda bro, shut up, Mama. Manda bro, shut up, Baba. Manda bro, shut up, Mama. Manda bro, shut up, Baba. Be magnified this morning. Yes, a shendetel. Be magnified this morning. Yes, a shendetel. Be magnified this morning. Awesome the God we serve deserves to be magnified. Awesome the God we serve deserves to be glorified. The God we serve deserves to be lifted high. I want you to thank Him. I want you to bless Him. It's the last Sunday in February. God God has been good to us. God has been good to us. It's not because of your beauty, no. It's not because of your cast, no. But the Bible says He will show mercy to whom He desires, Lord. This morning, huh, with the fruit of our lips, huh, we praise you, Lord. With the fruit of our lips, we praise you, Lord. With the fruit of our lips, we praise you, Lord. With the fruit of our lips we pray she shot up by a mama 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 the bro shot I have a baba baba da 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 shot I have a man the bro shot up right da 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 shot I have a mama man the bro shot I have a baba the God of all gods the warrior of all warriors we magnify your name Lord we glorify your name Lord we lift you up this morning Lord Yes Lord. yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord you're a beautiful king of so things. let the king I be laid Let your king be lifted high. Oh, Zana. Let our king be lifted high. Hosanna, everybody, come on. Oh, just the voices be magnified oh lord our lord you are highly exalted and there is nothing lord and there is nothing you can't do Oh Lord, our eyes on you. 
glorify oh lord be magnified for the last time oh lord be magnified oh lord be Lord be be bigger in my life. I don't know about you, but this morning, tell the Lord, Lord, be magnified in my life. Lord, be made bigger as you are in my life. Bigger than anything else. Bigger than anything else. Bigger than any circumstance or situation. Bigger than any problem or issue. Somebody come on. Be magnified. Be be magnified. Be magnified. Be magnified. In this house, oh, oh Lord, Lord. Oh, Lord. Be magnified. Be magnified. Be magnified. Be magnified. Oh, Lord. Lord. Be magnified. Thank you, Jesus. If you can just allow the keyboard just to play in all silence, you want to concentrate, focus on the King of Kings. Lift within your spirits, just focus on Him. Avoid every distractions if possible, and just give Him all your attention within the next few seconds. Thank you, Lord. Kelebos Kataya. Be magnified. Oh, Lord. Be magnified. This time around, you want to just sing that song from the depth of your hearts. Even as you lift your hands to the King of Kings as a sign, as a sign of surrender unto Him. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Oh, Lord. 
morning we surrender unto you and we say be magnified in our lives omnipotent God omniscient God Jehovah Nisi Jehovah Shammah El Shaddai Adonai be magnified in our midst this morning be made bigger than any other thing in our midst Amen. be made bigger than any other man or woman in our midst Amen. in a situation or circumstance in a sickness or illness or disease Lord be made bigger Amen. be made bigger Amen. be made bigger Amen. we magnify your name Amen. we magnify your name Lord from the children to the mothers to the fathers to the brothers to the sisters Amen. Lord Amen. in your house we say be magnified Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus Christ we pray Amen, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah family kindly take your seats wherever you where or are hallelujah thank you lord sando kola habaya lebrus and telemakoda handish thank you jesus hallelujah whilst whilst um if before destiny kids go to their school hallelujah we'll take a couple of um announcement very critical announcement and then um, we'll carry on from where we left last week hallelujah but before then let me use the opportunity to welcome each and every one of you into the presence of the lord we are welcome hallelujah to the power word international the house of power hallelujah hallelujah where jesus christ is the head hallelujah where impossibility becomes possible where the words that we speak, they are spirits and they are life. Hallelujah. Amen. So, please, can you give your brother or sister a high five sitting beside you on your left or a right? Tell the person you are welcome. Expect something good coming your way this morning. Tell the person, oh, please speak prophetically to somebody. Tell the person, expect something good. Something good. Something good. Something good. Something good. Something good is coming. Tell the person you, please, if you did on this side, on the other side, tell the person that you will not live here the same. You will not live here the same. Tell the, if the person is not looking at you, look at the person and tell the person, I am prophesying to you that you will not live here the same today. Oh, give the person a high five. Just top it up with a high five. Hallelujah. Amen. We have a very important week coming up. Uh, this uh, a very important weekend coming up this weekend hallelujah i believe we are all very much aware our um, marriage 101 dinner will be coming up this friday but before then as announced uh, previously we are um, all the women of favor in the house uh, friday morning from half five to quarter past six we are praying online hallelujah it is i'm leading you know by the leading of the lord i'm leading you for the next we, we've done one. If you missed one previously, please don't miss the one coming up. Hallelujah. It is instructed. I, for the, since we started, I have not led the women in prayer online before. Hallelujah. And I was not prepared to do so until instructed. So we've got four Fridays left. Don't miss any of them. Amen. Amen. So Friday, please, all the women in the morning from half five, 
especially if you are not at work, you should be online praying. Don't be sleeping. A little sleep, a little slumber. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ says that my sheep, they know me and they hear my voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As the servant of God in this house, if I speak and you do not hear my voice, or you don't want to obey, obey, obey my voice or instructions that the Lord has given us, who else or what else would you obey? Women of favor. Oh, I'm speaking to women of favor. Especially if it's half five on Friday and you know that you've set your alarm. Even you've set your alarm and the alarm goes and you just turn it off and pull the duvet. Full cover. Strike yourself and wake up. It's only, you know, a few minutes to pray. A time invested in prayer, it is never wasted. Hallelujah. It is never wasted at all. It says that the angels are in heaven and they are collecting prayers into a vial. When it is needed, they release it as a sweet smelling fragrance. So if your vial is empty, uh, which one would they release? Amen. Okay. It says that he or she that have ears, let them hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So I finish on that one. However, on Friday evening, Marriage 101 dinner will be live. Hallelujah. Oh, I can't hear you. Are you not excited about this? I said it will be live. It will be live right here. Hallelujah. We'll be here. Please, the timings are very, very specific. If we say 6 o'clock, it will be 6 o'clock that will be starting. It is not uh, any other time. It is British time. If we say 1800, it will be starting 1800. So if you come late, it's up to you. Stallion, please come. Come and tell us what should we expecting for the dinner. The three course, three star dinner you are preparing. Please come, come. Come and enlighten us. Come and enlighten us. Hallelujah. Let's give her a round of applause. She is, if you don't know, she is our head of catering department. All the sumptuous meals that we have been enjoying, she is the one responsible. Well, it's an, it's an elegant affair, red carpet style. That's right. The meal will be um, honey roasted chicken, Aye. Spanish rice. Mm. Uh, it will be chicken soup for starter. And we'll be having Sunday for dessert. That's right. And we will also have vegetables, um, mashed potatoes, creamy mashed potatoes and vegetables in um, cheese sauce. Amen. Did you, did you get it? Okay. But however, if in case you, you have any allergies, please let them know or let Sister Leanne know so that they can prepare for you specially. Amen. Be on time. That day will be powerful, uh, more than the word powerful. However, the kids will not have the children in here. They will keep, uh, if you haven't got childcare, please still bring them. They will be catered for in the other hall. Amen. So if you are in the other hall, they will be catered for here. If you are here, they will be catered for on the other side. They will still be provisioned. But they will not be among us per the discussions at stake. Hallelujah. Parents, fathers, mothers, I believe the language is understood. Oh, if it's understood, please give me amen. Amen. Uh-huh. Amen. So, and then on Sunday... On the Sunday, so whilst we have a good dinner on Friday, enlightening, educated thoughts on romance, sex, and love. On Saturday, you rest. If you are going to work, you work. Sunday. Sunday. Sunday is a special service. Hallelujah. So next week, Sunday, again, is a special service. On Sunday, we'll be having uh, a special Sunday. I call it a resurrection miracle Sunday. Hallelujah. I am I, I'm only revealing that one to just you here today so that you know what is at stake. I call it a resurrection miracle Sunday because we have entered. Sunday is the first of March and Jesus Christ rose up on the third day. And March is a March is the third month, isn't it? Hallelujah. So it is a resurrection miracle Sunday. And you will see what I'm talking about. We have three things there. Prophetic communion service. We have feet washing service. And we have anointing service. Three. Again. Hallelujah. 
So these three are very necessary. I was wondering, Lord, why do you say we should do feet washing service? And then all of a sudden, the Lord begins to enlighten me. He says that wherever the feet of your soul, Bible says that wherever the feet of your souls will touch or step, you shall possess. Isn't it? Hallelujah. And then our theme for this year is what? Possessing our possessions. How will the Lord prepare you to possess your possessions? Hallelujah. So one of the ways and means was that is that you know your feet get washed and anointed. Oh my God, you are not excited. You can't see it yet. Don't worry, you will see it. But it is, it is. I am very excited with Dimi. Any time God speaks specifically, whenever He speaks concerning a program or a service, He does marvelous things. Hallelujah! I have never seen Him speak and He doesn't do anything at all. So I leave it to you. I've done my part. I leave the rest for you. Oh, can I hear a big amen? Oh, I thought you were going to give me a round of applause for doing well. Thank you. Thank you for being so kind. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Very, very last, last point, very critical. Um, you see, our camera there... Um, you know, yesterday myself and President were here for about three hours, you know, putting lights and trying to get things for our audience to join us or to, you know, to benefit from it. It's been very good for people who, are, who have not been, who, or who cannot make it here or who are very far off or for one reason or the other will not be able to participate in service. Um, but the camera has been giving us issues. We put a lot of light here and yet still the pictures are very dark. You know, especially some of us who are very fair. You know, if you see my face, very fair, you know, like Sister Kirsty, me, me and her, we have similar color. Oh, don't we? <laughs> so it doesn't take our faces very well. Hallelujah. So we are going, we want to upgrade our camera. Hallelujah. We need to upgrade our, uh -huh. oh, God bless you, Star Baba. God bless you. God bless you. I said we want to upgrade the camera. We've got a camera recommended highly recommended, you know, uh, that will be able to pick those of us who have fair faces and everyone and sharp pictures, brightness. <laughs> hey. Hallelujah. But the, the cost involved is quite high. Hallelujah. I'll put it on the page for all of us. But if you are here and you, you know, you want to support us to get a new camera, the new camera I'm talking about is costing almost 900 pounds, 890 pounds. Yes. It's very expensive. This media thing you see is very, very costly to reach out to others also. But if we, I can have 10 families, you know, Honorable is here, finance man, it can break the cost down. <laughs> Honorable, so if I can have 10 families to give me 50 pounds, how much would that be? 500. 500 pounds. So we can have 500 pounds and, you know, we, we can top up from the coffers. If we have 10. But if you have the ability or you want to give us more, or we can have more than 10 families, then straight away we can have that camera ready for next week. Hallelujah. Amen. So, because I really want us to get it ready for next week um, so that all the important programs that are coming, we can be able to capture them um, uh, for others who will, not be, who will not be able to travel in to also benefit from them. Hallelujah. So, I will not put pressure on anybody now. <laughs> Amen. Even though I wish I would do that now, but I don't want to do that now. Please, if you, you, know, you, you want to support this buying of the camera, which um, is also part of the vision, either you can do an online transfer into the church account, not into my account, the church account, the account details are on the back of the offering envelopes or, uh, or any of the, um, no, specifically the offering envelopes because the building fund is a different account. Hallelujah. And stay there, uh, camera fund, camera fund. Stay there, camera fund. Your name will obviously appear and we'll get back to you. Hallelujah. If you have the you know, ability to give less than 50, of course, please do so. If you have the ability or you, are, you, know, you wish to do more than 50, please uh, we'll be excited and we'll be happy for your support. Amen. Oh, your amen is weak. The moment I spoke about 
you know, support him to buy a camera. Your amen, will, your amen went down here. Can I have a bigger amen? Hallelujah. This is, this is the work of God. This is, this is how expensive things are in terms of, you know, what we do here. Hallelujah. If, if um, those who count the offering, they will tell you what comes in. And if I tell you what um, rent we have to pay here every week, you'll be amazed how we have been able to manage so far. Amen. Uh-huh. So, let me not go too far the line. Amen. Please, do you have your Bibles there? Can you bring the Bible affirmation? Please go on this one. The other one. You have your Bible. We'll do before we go on to uh, the next part. Please, every Sunday, bring your Bibles. We'll be doing Bible affirmations. For those of us who are not aware, there will be Bible affirmations before we take the word. Amen. So, uh, this month, as you already know, it's been a month of marriage understanding and studying the fundamentals of marriage hallelujah and uh, we've we've been able to do a bit of introduction we've been able to touch on the role of uh, um, the role of a wife and a husband for the past couple of fa- past three weeks today we'll be looking at finance in marriage we'll be looking at finance in marriage but before we do so before i invite uh, the guest who will be speaking, who is not a guest, is also part of the family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we do so, Bible affirmation. Go down, go down, go down. Go down. I believe we all know that. We should all know that by now. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. Lift up your Bibles wherever you are. Don't worry, please. Don't worry. Don't worry. You can go back to the, the one. Wherever you are. Wave your Bible to the Lord. Hallelujah. What you believe in is what will work for you. What you believe in is what will work for you. What you proclaim, what you prophesy, what you profess, what you speak, it is what will come into manifestation for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, if, please, you can join your, uh, ask your husband to hold the other part too. Uh-huh. No, hold it like this so that you can both do it. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, this is my Bible. It is God's word for me. It has the power to make my ways prosperous and give me good success in life. I shall meditate upon it day and night and observe to do according to what he says. Amen. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. As already stated, I want to invite Mr. Emmanuel Agbleke. He is not a friend, he is a brother. I believe that most of us know him very well. And he is going to take us in the rest of the journey. Hallelujah. 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 Why the whole auditorium is so quiet like that? I know those who know me know that I'm not a quiet person. I'm very loud and I'm very aggressive. Last Sunday, I was ministering somewhere and my pa- the pastor asked me, where do you get all this energy from? I said, it's from God. Amen. Don't your pastor, my brother, has given me a very difficult tax. The reason being that I'm not a teacher. I'm a I'm a, a prayer man, and I like exalting. But some way, somehow, the topic that we are going to talk about is a gift from God. So I've managed to teach today. And I believe that God will do that for us. Amen. Before I go into it, let me thank man of God and all the leadership for giving me this opportunity to share with all of you. It's not easy for a man of God to leave his pulpit to somebody else. But thank you very much for the honor. And I believe that God will do his business. Amen. 
before we look at what we are going to look today if you can stand on your feet i want you to stand on your feet and i want that the musician you can you can play the low key i want you to stand on your feet beloved you come you you understand that life is spirit he said god is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so this morning what we are about to do we are going to touch spirits bible said and he said he himself will never leave you neither will he forsake you he will not leave you neither will he forsake you if god is our helper then what can a man do to us that means that if we want to do anything we need to touch into the spirit if this morning you want the word of god to touch you this morning i want you to lift up your voice and say crucify the, the flesh this morning and let your spirit exalt no me standing here speaking to you but let god speak to your spirit if you understand the spiritual matters you will not be fighting with each other because you can turn things in the spirit and they will work in your favor he said god is spirit and those who have to serve him must serve him in spirit and in truth he will never share his glory with man so this morning i want you to as you are quietly listening to the word of god I want you to tell yourself and say, God, crucify the flesh. Crucify the one that is speaking to me. I pray that Lord, let your spirit rather speak to me. Let spirit, let God's spirit be lifted this morning. And he said, whenever two or three shall get it, there I am. So I have no doubt that God is in our midst. If he is in our midst, then he will speak to us, no man. What do we have? which was not given to us from the above. I have been asked to bless. I can never kiss. May almighty God that know all. Ah, before you were even formed in the womb of your mom, he knew you. May he speak to you this morning in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare let your presence manifest this morning as we study your word. Amen. Take your seat. Hallelujah. Finance in marriage. Mm. Pastor, this is deep. Finance in marriage. Is very sensitive topic. Let me put a caveat to what I'm about to teach you this morning. That I'm speaking to believers. Let us establish that from onset. I'm speaking to believers. All children of God. Why am I saying that? Bible said, and to those who does not believe, the word of God is stupid to them. Are you with me? So what we are going to look at, maybe the cameraman or maybe this is on uh, YouTube, maybe whatever, and somebody will be listening to it and say, what is stupid? Why, why should I do that? That is why I said I'm speaking to believers. Man of God, I think you have done well and the whole month you have been teaching, I have been following myself. The introduction, the role of women and the role of men. Today is not a role of women or a role of men. But it's for all of us. It's unfortunate that I cannot go through all. But what I'm planning to do is that before I leave here, I will give you five keys five keys i want to give you more there's more and maybe if there's opportunity i will either send it over or we'll have time i was telling the man of god that i want it to be like a seminar than to be a preaching 
Because when it becomes like a message, it's very difficult to ask people to ask questions and then maybe get some clarification. So today I will limit it to only five and then we'll continue. Amen. I want you to bring, before we go to the five keys, let us establish some basis for these five keys. So can you go to Matthew chapter 19 and I believe that that verse has been coming common now. What is there? Matthew 19 and what is the verse? Matthew 19, what is the verse? If you are in a room for February, and Matthew, Matthew 19, and you cannot tell me the verse, then that means that your books are not here. Then take your pen and paper now. Take your pen and paper because other than that, you will do the same thing to me. I will give you the five keys and you will forget. So take your pen and paper and let us go through. I believe that I will be finishing and I believe God will turn your finances around in your marriage. Okay? God will turn. It's not me. It's not you. But God will turn your finances around. In the name of Jesus. Matthew 19. Let us go to verse 3. I, I, I don't like. I, I have my big Bible. But I don't like uh, opening it. But we'll, we'll, go, we'll go through. Uh, is that there? So, the Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? This man is teaching finance. Why is he asking this verse? Continue to verse 4. And he answered them and said unto them, have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Let us continue. Amen. If you have your Bible, I just want you to also open, open to the same verse. Okay. So, Verse 5 said, and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother he, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then, they are no longer two, but one flesh. Please, if the Bible is yours, I want you to underline this key word for me. He said, for this reason, a man shall leave the father and the mother and join to the wife and the two shall become one. Underline the word one. And they said, they are not two anymore. Are you with me? This is what I call the biblical base of dealing with finance. The two shall become one and they are no more two. <laughs> Man of God, you know you have talked to too many issues about marriage. You go to marital home and you realize that there's two people in the house. And it's not because they are just two people in the house. I call they are living in HMOs. Do you understand what is HMOs? House multiple occupancy. So married people need to live at home. But you get to that home. And they are living in HMOs. That means that everybody is for them, himself or herself. HMOs, when you enter HMOs, it means that there's a three room. I come, I rent one. I pay my bill. You pay your bill. And other persons also do the same thing. But the letters come through the same pool. So we pick them. Are you with me? This is Christian's home. Not well home. I'm talking about Christian's home. I don't want to ask how you live in your home. 
But I believe that God himself will be talking to you. Are you with me? We, he said, this is the reason why I will leave my parents and I will join to my wife and we will not be called two anymore, but we shall be one. I want you to understand that word one. As I said, I'm not a teacher, so if I'm not careful, I might miss. So they shall be one. And I was asking myself, if God is telling us that and both of them shall be one, there are no more two, then what does it mean for us to be one? What should we be doing so that people will see that we are one, but we are not living as a partners or co-inhibitants in the house. We should see that oneness in us. Bible said that I and Father are one. What verse is that? Me and the Father, we are one. What verse is that? Can you open to uh, John chapter 5 verse 19 for me? John chapter 5 verse 19. Say, for me and the Father, we are one. When you go through that verse, he said, there's nothing that I do without the knowledge of the Father. But actually, in the actual fact, whatever that I do is what I have seen my Father doing. This is oneness. He doesn't make a decision on his own. He doesn't do things as you want to do them or he feel that I want to do them. But they do it in one. The Trinity, they live in one. They are not living like a brother and a sister or a friend and a friend living in a HMO somewhere. He said, the son can do nothing of himself but what the seed the father do for what things soever he do that these also do the son likewise. And the verse that I said earlier on, me and the father are one, is John 10.30. So, you and your husband, do you make a decision without the other person knowing because I'm the man. So I decide what I want to do. The money, I'm the man, I'm the head. So I will decide whatever that I, you want to do. Yes, you can decide. Yes, you are a man. <laughs> you are a man, you can decide. Maybe in actual sense, you are not deciding wrongly. However, you don't know the plan of your wife. So that decision that you are making will cause a problem at home. And now, you want to run to the pastor. You said that there is a devil in this house. There is no devil anywhere. You have made a bad decision. And now you are accusing your in-laws, you are accusing your wife that it's evil. You go to the keys. So I'm just trying to establish some basis. So when I'm saying that, how are we going to resolve it? You are the wife. Yes. For all you know, I'm a soldier. Maybe you are in a very prominent job. So your pay is more than mine. And because of that, you said, okay, because I bring home more. So I will decide. But that is no oneness. He said, and the two shall become one. If I want to, I, I, was, I was teaching this in a seminar somewhere. And I demonstrate how you can become one. And I, I tied two people together. They were separate people. You were at your, your father's house and I, I was in my father's house and we joined together. So when we came together, I can never move now with, if you are really one, I can never move without you. Anytime I move, you have to move. If you are not moving, there will be freezing. Are you with me? So when we are not doing things together as one or as a, you are so married and you see yourself as two people living, then there will be a problem. This is not devil. Let us stop being too spiritual and everything is a devil, devil, devil. This is why devil doesn't have a hand in it. It's you, two of you sitting there in that marriage causing the problem and now you give the credit to the devil. 
and the two shall be one. Before I proceed, I'll ask a controversial question. If you feel you want to answer, answer it. If you feel you don't want to answer, just answer it to yourself. It's sometimes it's very unfortunate that maybe you're here, your partner is not here. So whatever that we are saying here, you go home, you want to practice it, your, father, your, your partner says no. Because he has not gotten that teaching. That is where the problem is. So we as a Christian, as a Christian wife or a Christian man, you are here, your wife is not here. When you go, don't go and say, this is what I have heard. And this is how we are going to do it. Please, apply wisdom. <laughs> How many of you here that you want to tight and your husband said no or your wife said no why should we give all this money to the church? Why should we give 10% to the church? No, you are not taking that money. Because of that, I have your bank account and I will have my bank account. You can pay tight and I will not pay tight. I, want to answer you. I don't want you to answer it to me. Answer it to yourself. Ask yourself in the same question. So are we one? Why am I paying my own tithe? And now you are also doing whatever that you do. Whatever that affects one person. Affects the whole house. So there should be an agreement. We should believe that we are one. As so far as with marriage. As I said. As I heard in the introduction. It's not for, for boys. It's for men. If you're not there to make that massive decision, that difficult decision, then the marriage is not for you. It's not a joke. Amen. They shall be one. No more two. Tell somebody sitting around your side that we shall be one. No more two. We shall be one and no more two. If your partner is sitting with you, say that we shall be one. Maybe you are here, you are here to marry. Tell yourself that I will, I, 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 when I get married, I will not see two people anymore, but I will see one person. Amen. Right. When I was getting married, I have one bank account. I didn't get married in UK. I got married in Africa. Okay, and as I said, I'm an aggressive person, so I take stubborn decisions. So when I got married, my wife was in Africa. The problem started. People were just telling me, "Now you are going to bring that girl over, and now that girl will come and just divorce you and go away. Why can't you find somebody here?" A lot of my friends, people were talking nya, 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 in my ears. I didn't make the decision with you. I went to my closest with my God and I said that I want to marry. And he said, he who finds a wife has found favor before me. So it's not you deciding for me. Many a time we like friends to involve in our friends. Do this, how I do it. So you have to do it that way. Who says so? If God is overseer, why are we practicing what your friend is practicing? That doesn't end the matter. The very day my wife stepped in the land UK, I picked her in my sporty car. Astra P. Reg. Straight away from there, we didn't go home to bank. And I changed my account title and made it joint. I realized that I'm not single anymore. So, we are two people. If we are two people becoming one, we should have one account. And the two shall be one. When I say that now, I think you are sitting, sitting here, you are saying, me! Joining my account with my wife or husband. No, 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 no. Hey! No! As for man of God, this one I have heard, but I will not practice that one. As for this one, me, for my wife to use all the money to do shopping. 
Ah, no, 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 no. I'm not telling you whether you want to do it or not. But he said, there are no more two. They are one. Let me put a caveat here. I'm not asking you, as we go through the five points very soon, you realize that I'm not asking you that maybe you don't have a joint account. When you leave this auditorium, go straight and go and have a joint account. That's not what I'm asking you. Maybe you have a measures in place. I cannot get time to go through majority of them. How many of you have heard about credit score before I proceed on? Credit score. One credit score, credit score. Okay. Just a few people. Okay. That's fine. So, the reason I said there's a caveat is that if your partner has a, a bad credit score and you have a joint account straight away, both of you have that credit score. Are you with me? So maybe that you have a, a plan in place that because of that, maybe you mess up before we go together and now you have a bad credit score. But, okay, let us keep that account separate. But there's still, there can be oneness in that account. Okay? As a matter of fact, I have 21 bankers. 21. Maybe the cameraman is getting and I said, this man is dodgy man. I don't know. But none of my accounts that my missus doesn't know the password to. Every card that she will pick, she has access to the pin. Every card. Majority of them are in our name. Those that are not in our name is a business bank account. And because it's a business bank account, she still needs to know how the business is operating. So, I've given her a full access. Beloved, we should stop living as co inhabitants in our marital home. He said, and the two shall be one. And no more two. So why are you hiding? You're looking at your pay slip and you hear the door opening and you close it. Hi. Who are you deceiving? Are you married or you are in a HMO somewhere? So, there's, I want you to understand two things in finance in marriage. Understand that the couples are one. There are no more two. You need to establish that. You need to come to conclusion that we are no more two. We are one. You need to establish that before all these keys that we are going to talk about will work. If you don't understand that, then you will struggle. There will be a problem. I don't want to bring a problem at your home. So the first thing that you need to do first is to understand, find a way, all the teaching that has gone through, understand that we are no more two. We are now one. Before you can apply this principle, because other than that, you'll be applying them wrongly. And you will say that they are not working. It's not because they are not working. It's because you don't have that principle that we are one, we are no more two. You are trying to talk on the phone. You don't want the other partner to... How can, how can I, you, you be talking to one person and one, that same person cannot hear? If you live in me and my words live in you, now you can ask whatever that you want and it shall be done for you. John chapter 15. If you live in me, if you are living in the body of Christ, you are living in the body of Christ. And now you want to talk. You don't want him to hear you. Hey, this is serious. So understand that you are no more two, but now you are one. Another controversial question. No question, but a statement. He said, you need to leave your parents in order to join with your wife and husband. And they said, what a stupid man. Don't you know that my parent is the one who have brought me up? Do you know where, where, how my parents suffer to bring me up? Why are you not don't want me to give the money to my parents? I'm not asking you. I'm not saying don't give money to your parents. As a matter of fact, it's honor thy father and thy mom so that you have a long life. And this, the same man is asking you that can you, this is the reason 
what is the reason? What is the reason why I'm leaving them and joining to my wife? What is the reason? Can somebody answer me? What was the reason? He said, this is the reason. Can you bring that verse up again? I think it's verse 5. He said, this is the reason why a man will leave the, thy father and thy mom and then join to the wife and they will become one. So what is the reason? When you read that verse, do you, do you ask yourself, what is the reason? And do you, or do you know the answer for the reason? The reason is the marriage. So the marriage, because of the marriage, that's why I will leave my parents in Ghana or wherever they are or walk from their home and now me and my wife now will be making decisions together. This is the reason. So when you, you, you come together and you cannot make a decision as a man, you cannot make a decision as a woman in a marriage and now you want every decision, you want your parents to make the decision for you, you don't know their belief, you don't know their faith and I believe that those of us that come from a, a, a Christian home where our parents, our, our, our siblings are very spiritual, even if they are involved in it, they will give you the, the right advice. But if they are not, that's what I said, this woman has be, bewitched you and now because of that you are not sending me any money anymore and now you said, oh yes, my mother said you are witch. My father said you are witch and the problem starts. Let us be one. When we are one, one, the benefit to be one is that everything will come to a discussion table. That how can we improve this? How can we do this? Two of you will make that decision. So you will not accuse me and I will not accuse you because two of us decided together. If you go wrong, we know that we made a decision and it's wrong, we'll go and correct it. I like my wife to question me why do you want us to use this money? And I want to give her a reason. I want to convince her. We are in the parliament. I want to win. She wants to win. And then at the end of the day, we compromise. And when it goes wrong, he will not accuse me. So, one, understand that you are one, you are no more two. When you are oneness, how many are here? Again, question. I'm looking at the time. We will finish. I, I, I said it's 10, but I will use 5. But I want us to get this one before I give you a key. How many of you here always in marriage, but still using I, 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 I? That one, you can keep it to yourself. <laughs> it's my home. It's my house. It's my bank account. It's I, I. When you get married, replace the word I to we. It will take you some time, but it will do you good. We and mine change it to ours. Our children, our home, our business. Learn that language. It's not yours it's not your wife's it's ours as a matter of fact two of you doesn't even own it you are just a caretaker you say everything belongs to God and he has given it to you to be a caretaker why are you claiming that it's yours and your wife is also claiming it's mine so who does it belong to he put two of you together and has given you something so they said children are a gift from God so why are you now claiming the ownership? It's my son. It's my daughter. Who gave it to you? So let us change our language. I, we, my, ours. And that you feel comfortable around each other. Amen. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. That oneness is key. Beloved, if you cannot be one, all these principles that we are going to run through now will not make sense to you. Amen. Principle one. If you want, as I said, 
you 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 maybe the system that you are working on now is working but these are things to improve it if it's not there these are the things that you have to put together one pray together pray together about your finances pray together two of you hold hand together pray together about your finances today we are looking about finance so you can pray together on other things but if you want to see improvement you want to see peace you want to enjoy that finance will not become a problem as a matter of fact they said the love of money is the root of all evil so if you don't want that love that money to become a root of all evil will come to that where people misquote it and how people misinterpret it will come to that but if you don't want that to become a problem then you need to pray for guidance that god how should we bring our finance together how do we deal with it give us if is anyone of you lack wisdom let them ask is any of you lack wisdom you don't know how to deal with your finances it's becoming a problem anytime you raise issue about financial problem god help us together Help us to understand how to deal with it. Pray together. Matthew 18, 19. It said, whatever that two of you will agree and pray about, whatever that two of you, if you and your, your partner, you and your wife, you and your husband can go on your knee, you can go on the altar and say, God, we want, we want to be one. Maybe we are living together for this long, but we are not one. Our decision, everything is wrong. But we want to live together. We want to put our finances together. God help us. He says, so far as two of you have agreed and asked the Father, He will let you have it. Agree and pray together about your finance. Number two. As soon as you get married, as soon as you are entered into that marriage, lose that individualistic attitude. Lose it. As soon as you get into that, he said, what I have put together, let no man put asunder. As soon as you get married, lose that individualistic my, 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 my lose that mentality into hours you made that decision for God's sake on that on that altar you made that decision so that till death do us apart so that means that you are saying you are making that confession that we are not together we are not individual uh, uh, two people anymore you make, you took that decision and the, 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 both of you look at each one face and make that decision so why now is mine is yours is hey <laughs> hallelujah lose that individual and replace all i was into we and ours amen Number three. Have a plan. Beloved, we'll get to number four and we'll spend a bit time. That's where the controversy comes. But these are the principles. Have a plan or set a goal. The reason why I'm saying have a plan or set a goal, many a times we have a problem in the marriage because there's no plan. There's no plan for our money. If I ask you here now, how many of you have sat down beginning of uh, the year 2020 with your partners or with your wives and said that, okay, this year I want to do this course and this is how much the course is going to cost me or this year, this is what I want to do. This is the plan. This is the plan. Uh, the man you... Also, this year, maybe I want to develop myself. So, the reason why you have to have a plan is that the plan have a financial implication whatever that you want to do they have a financial implication so if your partner doesn't know what you want to do and come the may you said okay i'm going to school and now there's no money the small money that we are going to fix the home you are taking it to school are you with me 
and the woman is be worried or the man is worried how are we going to finance and the, the tension start building okay I don't have money you can use your own money have a plan know that in January or maybe some point this year this is what we want maybe we want to buy a plot maybe we want to start this project this is how much this is how much who will build a house without not first sitting down and calculate the cost Are you with me? So, if you sit down and calculate, okay, the whole year, this is what I want to do. This is what we want to do. This is the state we are going to do it. There will not be a financial burden anywhere. Even if you go wrong, two of you come back to the drawing table again and now decide, okay, can we tweak this plan? Because every plan have a backup plan. Have a plan. Have a plan. When you have a plan, you'll be able to calculate the cost of the plan and also identify that, okay, this is what we want to do this year. And the more importantly, if you have a plan, you now commit the plan into the hands of God. And God is the one that let that plan materialize. Many a times, we don't have any plan throughout the year. We say, God have not blessed me. But how do you know that he have not blessed you because you don't you don't even have any plan have a plan that is number three have a plan number four is where the <laughs> combine all your resources or combine all your finance now to be one combine all your finance to be one combine all your finance to be one okay that is why i said initially that how many of you have a joint account because of time i don't have time to go into the benefit of joint combining the resources or the benefit of joint account but joint account bring transparency joint account eradicate all doubt okay that the reason why I don't feel stressed is that I'm comfortable to tell my wife that we don't have money. And you, she will not be able to question me why. Because she can go into the bank account and know how we are spending the money. There's no doubt somewhere that I have any secret account somewhere. Many a time, I, I ask yourself that question. If you don't have a control of your partner's or somebody's account, don't you think that the person has some money? No matter how you see the person spending, you still believe that you still have some money somewhere. Am I right? Because you don't know what he's spending on. So maybe you have just um, uh, one model that I have come across. Um, is he said, okay, at the end of the month, I give my wife four hundred pound for her to keep. That is for her I keep. When that partner they separate that money like that, what happened is that he will. The other person will still be thinking that that 400 that I gave you last time, you still have 100 somewhere. So why are you saying you don't have money? Because you're still saving some money somewhere. So you, you, the person can still remember that 400, that 100. So, you want, so I ask you money, you say you don't have money. I ask you to help me, you say no. But if all the account is there and you go, this one only your credit score permit. And you go there one person or even your credit score does not permit the other person have access to the account and you go there no oh, okay you he, he, he she went to shopping he bought this one two three okay there's no money there's no confusion she or he trusts you that everything is transparent it is comfortable combine all the resources in unity that we stand i said the trinity the reason i said i have not done anything without seeing my father doing it so before you if in, if if i'm going to shop or i want to buy something you know what that is why i brought in the tithe because you have not combined your resources and you don't do things in common when it comes to tithing which will open financial doors to you one person said no and now there's a disunity and now you are not praying together and you're still expecting blessing if there's oneness and there's a combined resources before we start spending we have already set aside our ten percent. As a matter of fact, I don't know what your uh, man of God you have told your congregation. As a matter of fact, I'm a believer in tithing. 
And for me, so far as I hold that covenant, I'm not expecting a single iota of doubt that I will be poor. Never. Unless God is not the, the, the truth God that I serve. If 90% cannot sustain your home, then 10% will never do anything. As a matter of fact, I don't even go by the 10%. I even give more than 10% because he said, the measure that you have used will be used and given, given you back to you. I don't want to use Titan to schedule that. Oh, I, 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 you become so religious. I have to go and pay 10%. Ah, I have to go and give that. Oh, pastor is asking for 10%. No. Know the benefit to you and to the family. Let us come together. What is God saying about finance? Well, what is he saying? You know, every, every, every blessing have a key. So you can still be blessed. But you will be in a financial bandage because maybe you are not operating that key. So let us put the resources together. Let us decide together what we want to use our finances for. Let us agree. Because God likes the cheerful giver. Now one person is bringing a tithe. One person is crying at home. You go to a, a prayer meeting and God is touching your, your heart that you need to give thousand pounds so that I'll open the door for you. And now you decide on your own over there. God has spoken to me. You just wipe the whole bank account. And you get home and your wife or your husband is waiting for you over there. And you say, this one is devil. It's not. Yes, God has spoken to you. He will never lie to you. Why can't you get quickly to your, your partner or your husband and say, honey, this is how I feel. If two of us are one, when I talk to her, when she talks to me, I will not argue. Because God is the one speaking to him or her. So he will let me understand that. Go ahead. And two of us will do it cheerfully and will get a blessing. But if I made that wrong decision and said I'm a man, I can decide. I will go and tell her later. Look, that money is not, we combine it. It's not mine. It's ours. Let us obey combining our resources together because of time i'll leave you with the uh, the final one and i honestly speaking if i get time i'll come back again and we'll look into it detail and we can look at it one by one what models that you can use that can help you that will not bring confusion but for time's sake let me give you the final one let how many of you here before you write the final one, how many of you here? This one I want you to answer because it's not secret. How many of you here that have a budget for 2020? Financial budget for 2020. How many of you? You are getting into it. Okay, good. Beloved, you know, organizations. Sometimes we become so religious that we don't want to learn, we don't want to uh, improve, we don't want to go other five over there. You realize that if you don't have a financial knowledge, you see in this country is free. How to manage finance in your home is free course. The councils are offering it. There's so much free online. You need to improve your financial education. This, this is not devil. You are misusing resources. And you are blaming the devil. It's not. Are you with me? Have a budget of your finance, number five. Have a budget at home. If, as a matter of fact, that is why, honestly speaking, I'm free man. I don't look at what my missus is buying. Do you know why? Because there's a plan for the year that this is how much we want to save as a family. This is the project we want to do. If we have ticked all those boxes, what are we for? Enjoy! Are you with me? Enjoy whatever you want to do. Take the bank card, but if because we have a, a, a budget at home, we have a, a yearly budget, we have monthly budget, and we have weekly budget. So when I'm walking around, I know what I can spend and what I cannot looking at the bank account because we have a ceiling. When she, I cannot follow her anywhere she goes. So she might be, she's walking with a friend. You want to buy something. Hey, 
I cannot buy a cup of tea for my friend because my husband knew. No. No. You're working, you're a man, you're working with your friends and you have to buy something for them and if I go home now, my, my wife. No. That's not what I'm saying. We have a, a budget. We know what we can. So I will make a decision whether I will go out or I will not go out because I, have, I can calculate and know that I will within the budget. Have a budget in the home. Have a budget about the children. You may be one person like to buy a suit for the boy. But there's no money. So why do you use the whole money to buy a suit for the, that boy? And when you come home and one person talks and says, Ah, it's not our children. Yes, it's our children. But we don't have the money. Have a budget. That Okay, the whole year, this is how much you are going to spend on the kit. As a matter of fact, when you go to some homes, they fight and fight on the child benefit. It's not your money. child benefit because you are now using the children money to, to claim that it's yours have a budget in place I want you to just because of time is almost but uh, the time is too short you know budget is not actual Budget is a guideline. You can twist, can review, you can change the budget as you go. Maybe you said you want to save 15,000 pounds. The time you are setting that budget, you didn't maybe take into consideration that there might be emergency that happened back home. And that happened. And you can't say that we have to, this budget is rigid, we cannot change it. There will be a problem. Before even I finish, let, 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 me, let, me, let me give you this secret. You know, one, one, if it's not already causing problem in your marriage, or it's a, you, you sense it, one major problem in concerning financing home, Pastor Bell with me two minutes, okay, is, is I want to give money to my father or my siblings. And other person said, no, 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 no. Because that's the reason why I will leave my parents and now we are one. Let us forget. That's not the case. As a matter of fact, my principle, not your principle, and I'll tell you, if it work for you, fine. This is not from quotes, from experience that work for me. Is that I, the man, give money to my wife's family. And my wife give money to my parents' home. So my siblings will not be insulting my wife. Since you got married to my, my brother, he's not giving us money. The, she's the one giving you the money anyway. If you call me, who have given you the money? She's the one who have given you the money. My wife family, they will not land me. If they see me now, they will carry me. They think that I'm the one giving the money. But the money is ours. Who all decided that you take it. But what that one has done is that, I mean, they are good book. They will not hate me. And now you are hiding in your home. You are hiding money. You want to give it to your parents. You want to pay for school fees somewhere. And now your wife has found out. Why are you paying this? Oh, no. My wife, you, are, you, you, don't, you hate my family. It does, it, it, she doesn't hate your family. It's because you are doing things secretly and you have, been, you, you have been found. People in marriages are hiding money and looking after other children. They have married somewhere. They have a children somewhere. The other partner doesn't know. They have their bank account and they are using the money to look after somebody over there and one day you'll be exposed. And now you say the devil. Where is the devil? You are your own devil. Hallelujah. Let us bring as a matter of fact, when you get married, we said that this is the reason why we leave our parents. But we have married family. So all of us are one. We don't see your parents, my parents, but our parents. Hallelujah. I believe that God will use these keys to actually turn your finance or your home into a peaceful home. 
before I put the mic down, we'll pray a short prayer. But remember that you are not living in the HMOs. You are not cohibiting in that house. Many people, my husband is paying the bill and I'm paying the rent. What kind of, are you renting? What, what, why is, okay, if I'm feeling cold, I will tell you that, uh, no, I, 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 for me, I'm not feeling cold, so you can put your jacket on because I'll pay more bill because you have divided it. If you are eating, you say, why are you eating too much? Because I'm paying for the food. Why are you eating too much? Because you, you, you are eating, you, you have divided that this person is paying the bill. To the point, some people say that the children, you take this person to school and I will also take this person to school. What about if the, the other person is not there? If your parent need money urgently and you don't have money and now you divide your money, are you coming to me to borrow the money and I will pay you later or what? Let our resources to be together. Let us make that conscious effort to realize that we are not HMOs. We are not living that you pay bill, you pay this, I pay this, I pay that. What kind of system are we? How can the body in Christ divide themselves that you are doing this, that one doing that without actually joining together? Again, if that is what works for you, there should be understanding. If there's love in that marriage, if there's love, love cover multitude of sin. It doesn't matter what system that you are operating if there's oneness and there's love among you, there's nothing like I'm paying. Yes, I've paid the bill. Maybe that's what you have the system that you are working, and there's a peace. Fine. However, understand that if I don't have money, I will still come to you. And all of us will agree and will share the resources. Maybe that's what work for you. Maybe you have operating that system. You pay the bill, you pay this and pay that. And it's working for you. And let us, as I said, there's no time for me to bring it. There's some couples have a common pot. That each one transfer money into that pot. And that, that's what they spend. And they keep whatever they... If that's the system that works for you, so keep it. I don't want to come and say that you have to do joint account. But that oneness, that transparency, need to... That oneness is a key that everyone know what is going on that there's no any friction between us amen so today we look at um, praying together we look at losing our individualistic attitude in dealing our finances we also talk about having a plan financial plan in our home number four we look at combining our resources together, particularly in this case, finance together. And number five, we look at having a budget in the home or budgetary system that operates, that brings us together. More importantly, loving one another and remaining in oneness throughout this principle. I believe that if we stick to that oneness that Bible said that I will leave my parents and join to my wife, I will become one. If we stick to that verse, finance will not become a problem. Finance will open other door rather causing us problem. If I want you to bow your head down and let us pray. Elohim, we thank you this afternoon. We bless your name and we exalt you. We thank you for teaching us and we thank you for what you have done to us this afternoon. We cannot do it on our own, but we pray that Lord, wherever that we are lacking, I decree and I declare that help us to strengthen our weakness. Ah, in our weakness, you are strong. I pray and I decree that let this lift our home up as a Christian home. Let us live in peace. Let finance never cause trouble in our marriages. In the name of Jesus, I pray that every, every plans of the enemy against our finances will never come to pass. Father, now I stand and I decree 
that your word said that I will be the head and not the tail. I decree this family, none of them will be the tail. In their finances, they will be the head. In the name of Jesus, they will lend to many, but they will never borrow from none. In the name of Jesus, let your glory, let your glory, let your mercy be superseding in everything that we do. In the name of Jesus that we pray. Let the saints say amen. Oh, I believe you were clapping. Can we do a better clap offering unto the Lord? Hallelujah. Have we been blessed? Have we been blessed? Oh, I can't hear you. Have we been blessed? Hallelujah. You know, like um, I call my brother Honorable. Hallelujah. Like Honorable said, or Mr. Emmanuel Agbleke said, for those of us who, is, who are in the army, he's also in the army. He's uh, Sergeant very soon he will be uh, on the next rank hallelujah a senior sergeant hallelujah uh, um, as he said um, the baseline the baseline for understanding how to work your finances or how to be very transparent in finances it still boils down to becoming one flesh with your spouse hallelujah if you are married you have to work at it that you are one if you're about to be married, you want to be working or you want to be, you know, aspiring to be one with your spouse to be. Hallelujah. Not only in love, not only in, in any other areas, but also in finances also. Finances has been one of the biggest issues in marriage. Hallelujah. Where the husband wants to spend, he says, I am the head. The wife also says, I am the neck. Hallelujah. And the wife wants to spend on, you know, the husband also wants to do things. But when we have the baseline, you understand the concept of oneness. That is where it all boils down. But the issue or the problem we have now in most churches, or in, let me not even go out here now, is that one spouse is in church, the other spouse is not here. How do you work it out? That is it. So, you've learned a lot of things within this month concerning your home. But your other spouse has not learned it. How is it going to work? How would it work? That is why we keep saying come to church as husband and wife or as a family. In that way you get transformed by the word of God. Everything he spoke about is the word of God. Was anything foreign? No. It's all based on the word. And therefore it is very necessary. Please, on Friday, once again, if you are not married, of course, please do come. Uh, if you are married, come with your spouse. Do your best. Because, you know, you are not in it alone. You are not in it alone. It's, it, I find it difficult to understand how one person will learn and they will go and, unless you go and teach your, your spouse. If you are able to teach your spouse, then that's fine. But it still does not mean that they shouldn't be here to learn. Amen. Our mission, our mandate is to teach, to educate, and to empower. And that is what the Lord is taking us through. Hallelujah. Amen. There was, uh, you know, according to the story you, you were giving, there was a man and a woman. The, the man said that I, I will pay for the rent, and the woman will pay for the food and the heating. So, when the man paid for the rent, and when the woman looks at the way the heating bills and the food cost is going, he said, no, I have to do something about this. <laughs> so, when he, he, he will check the meter reading and he realized that, no, the heating cost is going too much for the month, the amount of uh, uh, bills she is going to pay, then she will cut the <laughs> turn off the heating. Loose, let's, let's, let's put on jackets. The bills are going to... <laughs> Those, that's not those, that's not you know two, two people becoming one there hallelujah and then when he watched the way the husband will come from I, I believe the husband was in the army after pity the husband is hungry and the husband will come and want to eat but the wife will say no the way you are eating the bills will be too much at the end of the month so we will give the husband half and guess what will happen <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah amen so very quickly please five points anybody first one 
anyone first one five points that was released finance in marriage pray together about your finances pray together about your finances very important my wife my husband honey baby uh, sugar you know let's pray about these finances every month we are below the red line we need to pray about it hallelujah amen second point ha, second that's the that's the lose the individualism or individualistic attitude we've spoken about it hallelujah become we not i i i hallelujah and then the third one is have a plan have a plan it is always very important to have a plan for the things ahead you need to have a plan when you have a plan together when you say that honey this is what we want to do you know that the two of you will buy it together but when the man just have a plan this is what i want to do and the wife does not understand it there is a problem but when both of them or both of you see the plan then you begin to work towards the plan to make it real hallelujah the fourth point okay mr Freefa, you have been banned <laughs> from combine, combine your resources hallelujah combine your resources combine your resources in unity there is power hallelujah in unity there is power you can earn as much but with the little effort or the little your spouse add you also bring a, uh, you know empower the plan or the finances together if one person is earning a pound the other person is earning a pound and you put it together you have two pounds hallelujah and that is where the agreement is necessary and then uh, the last but not the least point is have a budget that is where we don't do hallelujah have a budget it is not pay as you uh, uh, pay as or uh, uh, spend as you go we, we we like spend as you go as the money come we spend and we go hallelujah amen so those five points very very important amen the lord bless you man of god please stretch forth your hands towards him even as he we pray for him he drove almost three hours to be here this morning some of us we are about five minutes away but we are sleeping please pray bless him bless him santa Keto, Libra, Hunter, Labara, Hantola, Epende, Peloantis, Ecotele, Rebetes, Librandes, Eperua, Lakata, Prendes, Ipalua, Eliba Handili Bosu Caparua, Mendili B. Caporiandis. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you glory for your man servant. We thank you for him, his life, and his family. Lord, none fellowship with you in this house and go back the same. May the grace upon this house work wonders in his life. May the favor in this house work miracles, something marvelous this week in his life. In the mighty name of Jesus, we commit him into your hands. We pray for a greater grace, a greater glory, and a greater anointing in finances also in the mighty name of jesus we pray that lord oh god we commit the work of his hands into your hands lord we pray oh god that the hands will be fruitful beyond his understanding and his imagination in jesus name we pray amen hallelujah amen please we'll go straight into our offerings and um, um who, after that we'll take it from there is there anyone we here with tight is there anyone here with tight please if you have your tights kindly come forward even as we pray with you i believe that as in terms of finances you know our servant of god today touched briefly on it i am a firm believer of tithing. Uh, you need to understand this kind of things it's something that will will be teaching we've been teaching and will be continued to teach hallelujah your pastor here is not here to eat your tight amen but it is a Bible, you know, principle. It's a financial Bible principle. It, it did not start from anywhere in the New Testament. It started from the Genesis, the book of Genesis. Hallelujah. It starts from the book of Genesis. Bible, Bible said that God said, eat everything except one tree. And that, how much is that? Ten 
percent. Hallelujah. The Lord says, eat everything in the garden except one. But when they fell foul to that, guess what happened? Disobeying just eating just one. They have everything, 90% of it. And when they ate it, they were sent out of the garden. Is somebody getting me? They were sent out of the garden. So, you know, lack of understanding or honoring the word of God in terms of this area, you know, closes the heavens upon you. Bible says that before then, God in the cool of the day will come and fellowship with Adam and Eve. He will come and fellowship. But when they were sent out, the heavens closed upon them. The heavens closed upon them. And that is why when you check Malachi verse 3, it says that I will open the windows of heaven upon you when you honor my tithes. Hallelujah. Is somebody here? Are you listening to what I'm saying? This is very important. This is key. Amen. It says that I will open the windows of heaven. Why? Because the heavens were closed. Lack of not obeying this, it closes the heavens. Hallelujah. Please, shall we stretch forth our hands even as we pray for those honoring tight? Perhaps you are still seated or you are here. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We pray and thank you for your daughter. We pray that Lord, oh God, may the heavens be open unto her and the household. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And then before we take the offering, before we take the offering as you prepare, hallelujah. I have a beautiful hamper here looking very nice and beautiful. Just by the way, if in case on uh, Friday you want to, you know, uh, um, you want to speak to me, you want to do something for you and your your spouse, you want to do something on that day, you know, maybe you want to say something to your spouse or you want to renew your vows, you know, let me know and then we can work out something. Hallelujah. I'm speaking to the men of power. Uh-huh. Amen. Okay. So, I have a beautiful hamper here. I want to present, you know, on behalf of the church. My wife, please, let's welcome Mama Elam to come and do the presentation. We want to honor somebody very special here today. Hallelujah. It could be you, it could be you, it could be anybody. But, you know, God has a day for each and everyone. Very briefly speaking, please, shall we welcome Mr. Emmanuel Ableke. Surprise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that, you know, he is not a guest in this house, you know. Over the years, he's been in and out, you know, transition hour, he's there. Um, when we call OIP, he's there. Every now and then, he's, you know, in and out of this place. And where he drives from, most of you, you will not drive there to even do anything. Like I said, it's three, almost three hours, isn't it? Almost three hours journey that he journeyed this morning to be here. And it's not the first time. It's not the first time at all. Hallelujah. However, on behalf of the church, we want to honor something small. Something small. Oh, I believe you are standing. The Lord bless you. I believe you are standing. I believe you are standing. Let's do it better. Let's do it better. Something small. Something small. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, let's present. It is very heavy. Oh, who is taking the picture? Mr. Frefa, are you taking the picture? Mr. Frefa, are you taking the picture? Who is taking that picture? Glory be to God. Oh, where are all my cam- Hey, is the camera not here? Thank you, Jesus. Wow, wow. So, I'll- uh-huh. Once you are standing, the Lord bless you, man of God. I know you want to say something, but I will not allow you to say it. <laughs> Please lift up your offering whilst you are at it. Let's let's do this. You are not lifting it to me, you know. It's just it's just you presenting it to God. And whilst you you know whilst you do that, please just say a word over it. Just speak a word over your offering. Speak a word over your offering, as you know. 
we said the last time your offering speaks your offering speaks your giving speaks for you it speaks for you the other day bible said the angel of god came and he said that cornelius the heavens have remembered your givings your giving speaks speak to god whatever you desire this man speak to god speak to god speak to god whatever is ahead speak to god speak to god in the name of jesus amen father we thank you we give you praise we give you glory for every offering lifted regardless of size or weight you knows our hearts may every every good measure pressed down shaken together running over be unto us and lord we seal every word we have received this morning and provoke every blessing that you have purpose for us this week in the name of jesus christ we pray amen glory team Amen. I have a God who never fails. I 